Hey there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we're going to be getting into Unit 4, Topic 8, Defining Devolutionary Factors. And before we get started, if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It's free. You can always change your mind later. It's a great way not only to support the channel and allow me to make more videos, but it also makes sure you don't miss any of the other topic review videos for AP Human Geography. So before we get into all the different devolutionary factors, we should probably review the concept of devolution. Remember, we talked about devolution in our Unit 4, Topic 2 video. Devolution is the transfer of power from a central government to more regional governments. Sometimes it's just that, a shift of power. Other times, though, it can actually lead to a state to break up and turn into multiple states. There are a variety of different devolutionary factors that could occur in a state that could lead to devolution. Sometimes it's the physical geography of a state that actually promotes devolution. States that are geographically large or have isolated populations actually might see unique cultures start to form throughout the state. These unique cultures cultures then could differ from the main state and could lead to more regional governments wanting more autonomy and more control over their regional populations. Speaking of culture, we can see that states that are culturally diverse and have different ethnic groups and nations and groups with a history of self-determination that haven't connected into the state's culture are more likely to see devolution occur as well. That's because these ethnic groups or national groups that are maybe isolated or living in their own communities remain culturally distinct and then throughout the course of time, they may start to want more regional control and power over their own day-to-day -day lives. And they will seek then to transfer power away from that national government. And that brings me to an important point. States that are seeing multiple factors occur at once are more likely to experience devolution. And that could be in the form of power being transferred from the central to the regional governments or pressure even to break the state up into multiple states. Another factor that could lead to devolution would be when a state abuses its power. When we see governments or a dominant cultural group abuse the citizens or take advantage of minority groups and discriminate against them, we often see calls for change in leadership, and that could lead to change in the political system itself. In some cases, such atrocities such as ethnic cleansing may occur, where governments seek to kill ethnic groups within society. Regardless of what happens, though, when governments abuse their power and corruption is prevalent, we see states start to break down. As citizens citizens become more frustrated with the status quo and are more likely to have protests that might be peaceful or violent against the system, and they will demand change. The next devolutionary force is terrorism. Terrorism is the use of violence or intimidation against civilians to try and promote terror for political reasons. States that have a lot of violence inside their borders or a lot of terrorism occurring inside their borders are more likely to see citizens become upset and demand change from the government and the state. If the state and the government can't reduce the amount of violence and also the amount of terrorism, they're more likely to see citizens then demand change for the exact structures of society. And this is where we'll start to see transfers of power and devolution occur. We can also see that states that struggle economically or have more divisions between different social and cultural groups are more likely to see devolution occur. States that fail to provide economic opportunities for all people in the state or fail to be able to provide jobs for all citizens are more likely to see citizens become frustrated with the status quo. Citizens want to make sure that economically and socially they're moving in a positive direction. And when we have unequal development within a state where certain regions are having more economic growth than others, that can lead to resentment within citizens and more demand for more local control over the day-to-day -day operations of the state. The last evolutionary force we could look at is irredentism. Irredentism is the movement by which a nation seeks to unify members of its nation that are spread out over the boundaries of other states. Remember, when we're talking about nations, we're not talking about a state. Here, the nations exist in multiple states. However, they're seeking to be unified under one state. And that's where devolution could occur. All right, geographers, that's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to practice what we've learned and check your answers in the comments below. Also, if you need more help with your AP Human Geography class, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that can help you do well on the national exam and also help you get an A in your class. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notified when I post new topic review videos. All right, thanks so much for watching, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.